I'm here today to talk to you about the beginning of life, the beginning of our lives. Don't worry, I'm not going to teach you today how to make babies. For that, you will have to look for a different speaker. But what I will try to do today is to tell you a little bit about what happens once babies are made. For me, as a developmental biologist, the formation and development of an embryo are the most fascinating phenomena in nature. I believe there is real magic to the way that embryos develop, and I personally haven't stopped being amazed at this process for the past almost 20 years of my life that I've spent looking at embryos developing under our microscopes. So why is it that we want to study embryonic development? For me, as I've told you, is my personal interest. I find it fascinating to think I was once a single cell. You all were once a single cell. How often do you think about this fact? I guess not very often. Well, I do it almost every day. This single cell that is created through the fusion of a sperm and an egg and carries all the required information to make each and every one of you the person you are today. This is really crazy when you think about it, right? On top of the personal interest, there are, of course, enormous clinical implications to the understanding of how embryos develop. The main thing that drives people to study embryonic development is the feeling that embryos can build everything. They can make a heart, they can make a brain, they can make legs, lungs, everything, starting from this single cell. For me, this is amazing. And it's even more amazing when we compare this to another complicated task, like building a car, for example. In this case, if I bring together the most experienced team and I give them the right instruction manual and all the required tools, they will manage to bring a car. In the case of the embryo, all these components are contained within this single cell. The instruction manual is our genes. The different parts are chemical compounds and metabolites, and the actual workers are the proteins that are responsible for putting everything together. Another amazing thing about embryos is that the way they develop is extremely well conserved throughout evolution. So if we look at the very early stages of development of a fish, a chick, a mouse, or a human embryo, they all look very much alike. We all have a tail in the beginning, if you wondered, and even more surprising, we all have similar, very similar brains. Yes, we and the fish have very, very similar brains. If I show you this picture, for example, I'm not sure how many of you will be able to tell me which of these is a human embryo. Believe me, the answer can be quite surprising. You can catch me at the break if you want to know it. <laughs> so this is all really nice, but wouldn't it be great if we could actually learn something from this process that we can use to cure people? So let me tell you that we can. And we can because during diseases, our body goes back to the same mechanisms that it used during the formation of the embryo. So for instance, if our skin needs to grow in order to seal a wound in our hand, it will reuse and it will reactivate the same genes, the same proteins that the embryo used to build the skin in the first place. So basically, we can learn from developing embryos how to build organs and how to cure diseases. In our lab at the Weizmann Institute, we focus on understanding how embryos make blood and lymphatic vessels. The leading causes of death in the Western world are somehow related to our vascular system. Heart attack, stroke, arteriosclerosis, 
cancer. These are all illnesses that involve malfunctioning of our vessels. So if we can learn from embryos how to encourage blood vessels to grow and how to stop blood vessels from growing, this can lead to the discovery of new therapies for the treatment of these different diseases. For instance, in the case of a heart attack, we really would like to know how to encourage blood vessel growth. What happened here is that this partially or fully blocked artery leads to a decreased blood flow to certain areas of the heart. As a consequence, the muscle is damaged and dies. The solution today in the clinics for this situation is a surgery, a bypass surgery that doesn't always work. We believe that if we knew how to grow blood vessels, new blood vessels in this area, we could potentially save the tissue. The exact opposite happens in the case of tumors. Tumors are really, really smart. That's why they survive so well. The first thing they do is to surround themselves with a wide network of blood vessels in order to get more blood, more oxygen, more food than the surrounding tissues. Again, in this case, we believe that if we knew how to stop blood vessels from growing in this area, we could starve the tumor and kill it. So who is going to teach us how to encourage blood vessel growth, how to stop it? I guess by now the answer is clear, developing embryos. And since I've told you that from fish through salamanders and all the way up to human, we all use similar mechanisms to make blood vessels. In our lab, we learn from zebrafish. We use these fish, first of all, because they are cute. I mean, look at them, <laughs> right? In addition to being cute, they develop externally. Their embryos don't need the mom's belly. So basically, their entire development happens in a plate under the microscope. And on top of that, they are transparent. Yes, transparent meaning we can see through everything happening in real time. What we have there here is a just-born zebrafish embryo with two cells that have just divided from the first single cell that I mentioned at the beginning. These cells are placed on top of this huge yolk ball that is full of fat and nutrients for the embryo to develop. We don't have that because we have a placenta, but they need it because they are not in their mom's belly. What I'm going to show you now is how real life takes shape every day in our labs. So these two cells will start dividing into four, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so forth. They will keep going and dividing until we get to a critical mass, a critical number of cells that is needed in order to start building organs. At this point, they will start moving and finding their place in space, the right position. As you can see here, once they get to the right place, the first organs will start to come up. We will have the head coming up in the top of the slide and the tail in the bottom. In the left side, you start seeing these squares are the muscles, the first ribs. We already have an eye coming up in the head and the ear will follow. By the end of this process, we have an almost fully developed zebrafish embryo. All this, amazingly enough, takes place during 19 hours in a fish. This is equivalent to three weeks of development of a human embryo, other than the difference in timing and this ball of fat, we look more or less the same. In order to focus on blood vessels, we and others have generated zebrafish embryos with glow-in-the-dark vessels. 
We have them in many colors. I personally love the green, but we also have them in red, in blue, and we can find a color for each of you if you want. The good thing about these fish is that now their vessels are very easy to visualize. So we can now test. We can test medicines, we can test chemical compounds, natural materials. We just add it to the water of these embryos, and we check what happens to their vessels. Can we encourage blood vessel growth? Can we stop it? We can then take this information and try to apply it to the clinics. Using these kind of experiments, we have recently been able to discover a new way to uh, form, to generate lymphatic cells in the lab for the first time. We started imaging zebrafish embryos and ended up finding something that has the potential to cure millions of people worldwide. So in our day-to-day -day life in the lab, we always go back to the developing embryo, the real beginning of life, because we know that all the answers we need are there. And all we need to do as scientists is to watch and ask the right questions. Thank you very much.